So to, how, to find the inverse of when given a function, all right, and this function is already in y form, so that's nice. Because now we know the next step that we're going to do to find this inverse is just like we did with the coordinate points. Swap the x and the y. Right? So that's step number two, Ricardo, is you swap your x and your y coordinates. Then what we're going to do is now solve for y. So I need to isolate my y variable. So the first thing I do is I undo addition and subtraction by using the inverse or sorry, um, subtraction property of equality. So I have x minus 2 equals 2 thirds y. Now, to undo multiplying by 2 thirds, does anybody know what you have to do to undo multiplying by 2 thirds? Multiply by the reciprocal, right? Because any number multiplied by its reciprocal is going to be 1. And 1 times y would just leave us with y. You could also undo multiplying by 2 thirds by dividing by 2 thirds, right? But how do we divide fractions? Flip and multiply, right? If you flip that, you get the reciprocal and multiply. So it's the same thing. So let's multiply by the reciprocal. Make sure you put that in parentheses. So many students will forget to put it in parentheses, and then they'll get the problem wrong. So we know that any number multiplied by its reciprocal multiplies the 1. 1 times y is just y. Then, just your property. This becomes 3x, the 2's divide out to 1, minus 3 equals y. y equals 3x minus 3. Now we've got to graph both of them. So if here's my function, which we'll just call, uh, we'll just leave it there. Now y inverse is equal to 3x minus 3. Okay, Does everybody see what I did, how I found the inverse? So now let's graph both of them and see how they relate to each other. Who cares? All right. So graph. So graph looks something like that, right? So let's graph this. You guys, remember all linear functions can be written in the form y equals mx plus b, right? Where remember b is your y-intercept and m is your slope. So since my y-intercept here is 2, I go up to 2. I make a nice big dot. Then my slope is 2 thirds. So it tells me to go up 2 to the right 3. I could also go down 2 to the left 3. And I graph. Now, we said that all functions are reflected over the y equals x line to find their inverse. Right? So now I need to reflect this over this line. But, ladies and gentlemen, we could have, um, uh, we, let's just graph it rather than trying to reflect it and get it right. Let's see what the graph is going to look like. So here I have a y-intercept of negative 3. So I go down to 3. 1, 2, 3. Then I go, my slope is now 3 over 1. So I go up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. Up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. Up 3, over 1. And obviously, this point should be on the dotted line, but my graphs are not the best in the world. <laughs> So you guys can see, hopefully, that it's going to reflect about there. And it reflects, obviously, where they intersect is going to be on the reflection line. But therefore, you guys can see when graphing this in my inverse, you can see that they're reflected over the xy line. All right? So all you guys got to do for this is just find the inverse. OK. Um, I don't have time to 